Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again. Tonight we begin our next chapter in our culture unit, and that is on religion. So here we go. Before we get started with this particular lecture, and basically every lecture, um, I think it's important to, to have a conversation about what we are doing and why we're doing it. Uh, because religion tends to be something that for a lot of people is very, very personal. And so talking about it in a classroom setting can be, you know, at times people may feel uncomfortable with it. Um, people may have questions about it. And so I want everyone to understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. Right? So first thing I want folks to understand is that when we're talking about religion, we are not going to promote nor are we going to devalue any particular religious faith or belief. Right? We're going to try and stay as unbiased, as neutral on all of this as possible so that we can understand all these different religions, religious beliefs, and faiths um, on the same plane. Next thing I want you guys to, to know is that this is a survey course still. All right. I know that with AP, it seems like we get into a lot of details and things like that, but everything that we're going to say, generally speaking, is true. But I do want you guys to know that there are a lot of local variations and differences that because of the lack of time, we might not be able to get into or that I just plain don't know about. So I want you guys, I, I want to encourage you guys that in your notes, please write down if something seems uh, different in the way that you've heard about this faith or the way that you practice this faith. Write it down. Let us know so that we can have a, a conversation about this in class so that we can all have a better understanding of the diversity of our world. And finally, we're going to be looking at religions from the geographic perspective, which sometimes may be slightly different from the perspective of a follower of a particular faith. Again, I want to encourage you, please let us know. Let us know about those discrepancies. That way we can have a much deeper understanding of how our world works and people's faiths and different cultures. And I don't ever want to discourage uh, the kind of discussion that this may generate, but at the same time want people to understand that we're not going to promote or devalue any faith while we're going through this. So here we go. Let's get started. So as we often do, let's go ahead and start out with a few definitions so we understand what we're talking about here. First off, we have what is a religion? Definition. A system of beliefs and practices that attempts to order life in terms of culturally perceived ultimate priorities. And that's really important to understand because that's why we're studying this, because different religions are going to have different ultimate priorities. And therefore, people are going to structure their lives. People are going to order their lives in different ways. They're going to interact with things in different ways. They're going to, we're going to see it manifest itself in different ways. And as human geographers, that's what we're looking for, is how are people doing things a little bit differently? And as far as our definition of religion, the reason why they're doing things differently is because of those different ultimate priorities. And an example of a religion could be, let's say, Christianity. And I'm going to kind of go down the list and, and keep with a consistent theme of uh, examples. Our next Definition is branch, a large and fundamental division within a religion. So, continuing with Christianity, there are three major branches. There are a lot of smaller branches, smaller churches, things like that. Three major branches, large fundamental divisions within a religion. Those three branches are Roman Catholicism, Orthodox Christianity, and Protestantism. And that is in order of how old those different branches are and when those divisions are took place. Then we have denominations. Denominations are a division of a branch that unites a number of local congregations into a single legal and administrative body. If we were to take one of those branches of Christianity, 
let's say, Protestantism, an example of a denomination might be Baptist or Lutheran or Methodist, all different denominations of the branch of Protestantism within the religion of Christianity. And finally, we have a sect. A sect is a relatively small group that has broken away from an established denomination. Now, a lot of times sects have kind of a negative connotation to them. That is not necessarily the case. And I'll give you an example of why it's not a case. For example, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or LDS, or Mormon, began as a sect which broke away from other Christian denominations. Uh, within its, a, a lot of scholars kind of associated as part of the Protestant branch of Christianity. Uh, but you're going to hear people who say, no, it's, it, it's its own separate branch of Christianity. And now, and that's important to understand because things have changed. Yes, it broke away as a small group beginning in, in New York State. And now it is its own either denomination or branch, depending on who you talk to, of the religion of Christianity. And so again, that's why a sect is not, a lot of times people have this connotation or association with it as being negative. It's definitely not. Sometimes it can be, but there, there, there's, there's, by itself, a sect is not necessarily bad. We have to look at the details of what we're talking about. Right? So let's take a look at a visual. So this gives us a visual of same kind of thing that we just looked at. So religion, Christianity, branch, Protestantism, denomination is Lutheran, or, or that's an example, and a congregation, because when you look at the definition of denomination, it says uniting several congregations. An example of a congregation could be the first Lutheran church of Bonita. Now, here's what I would like you to do on this slide. We already gave an example for Christianity, the Protestant branch, denomination, congregation, so on and so forth. I'd like you to try and create your own example using your prior knowledge with religion. It could be a religion that you know of. It could be a religion that you follow. It, it doesn't matter what, but I want to see if you can use the same kind of vocabulary in a different example. So in your notes, please do provide an additional example, see how far you're able to get. See what questions come up during the process of coming up with your own example. I'll give you a moment to, to do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at a geographic example of a particular religion. And in this case, we're actually talking about a particular branch of a particular religion, and that is Roman Catholicism. Right? So in this map, we can see the way that Roman Catholicism is divided up across the United States. And the Roman Catholic branch of Christianity is a really good example of a hierarchical religion, uh, a religion that has a very distinctive hierarchy. And we'll define that and talk about that more later. But this is the, the visual uh, divisions of the United States within the Roman Catholic Church. So, because it has a hierarchy, the, the shape that I want you to associate with this is a pyramid. So here we go. At the bottom of the pyramid, and you can't see it on this particular map, are parishes. And parishes are administered by priests. Okay? Several parishes together might make up, or will make up, a diocese. And a diocese is administered by a bishop and then several dioceses together would be would make up a province. So the dioceses you can see outlined there in black, the provinces, which are administered by archbishops, are outlined there in red. Now a diocese that is administered by an archbishop is called an archdiocese. And those are the dot distribution element of this map. Those are the red dots. And you'll notice that most of them are big cities. L.A., San Francisco, Chicago, Detroit, New York, Miami. So they're, they're big cities on there. So what we've got is parishes at the bottom 
administered by priests. Above that, we've got dioceses administered by bishops. Above that, we've got provinces administered by archbishops. Some archbishops might be recognized as cardinals, and the College of Cardinals are responsible for, whenever it is necessary, selecting the person at the very top of the hierarchy, and that is the Pope. And the Pope is actually the head of the Diocese of Rome, and is actually in charge of the entire Roman Catholic Church. So that's how that hierarchy looks, and this is how it looks for the United States of America and the divisions of the Roman Catholic branch of Christianity in the United States. So shifting gears a little bit, let's go ahead and talk about uh, some of our broad differences in the way that we categorize religions. And I'm going to tell you guys right now that these two terms, universalizing and ethnic, you need to know for every single religion that we look at. Is it a universalizing religion? Is it an ethnic religion? So let's get into what those are. A universalizing religion is a religion that claims global truth and applicability regardless of ethnicity or culture group and seeks the conversion of all people via evangelism and missionary work. So universalizing tries to be universal. Everyone can be a part of it. And so, perhaps unsurprisingly, more people identify with a universalizing religion. About 58% of the world's people identify with a universalizing religion, with the vast majority of that 58% coming from three religions in particular. There are other universalizing religions that we will look at, but not with the same following as these big three. Right? So some examples of universalizing religions in order of the following that they have. Christianity is the largest religion on earth, over 2 billion followers. Islam coming in at second with over a billion followers. And then Buddhism with several million, I think. 400 million followers. And there are other universalizing religions, but you know, that accounts for a fairly substantial portion of Earth's population self-identifying with a universalizing religion. And you're going to see a much larger geographic area uh, over which these religions are spread as well. On the flip side, ethnic religions are definition a religion with a relatively concentrated spatial distribution whose principles are likely to be based on the physical characteristics of the particular location in which its adherents, those are followers, are concentrated. Ethnic religions do not actively seek converts. About a quarter of the world's population self-identifies with an ethnic religion. That's going to be some examples. Hinduism, Judaism, Confucianism, Taoism, Shintoism, Animism are all examples of ethnic religions. And to be even more specific, Confucianism and Taoism aren't actually religions, but we'll cover that in a later lecture. Right? And I'm going to tell you guys right now, have to know for every religion, whether it's universalizing or ethnic, as we go forward. Another way that we can differentiate between religions is in the number of gods that they follow. Right? So here we go, let's take a look at them. Monotheistic, mono meaning one, singular, the doctrine or belief in the existence of only one God. Judaism, Christianity, Islam are all monotheistic religions. In fact, they are all somewhat related to one another because they are categorized or labeled as Abrahamic religions, a term that I would recommend you know. Um, on the off chance that you see a question that says, you know, which of the following is an Abrahamic religion? I could see that possibly being it. Um, or drawing connections between them, something like that. And Judaism is, uh, according to some scholars, the oldest current monotheistic religion, though some will disagree with that and say that it's actually Zoroastrianism, which is believed by many to be the oldest monotheistic religion in our history. Now, Zoroastrianism began in uh, what is what was called Persia, modern-day Iran, and some scholars believe that the concept of monotheism began with Zoroaster and diffused 
and influenced Judaism, Christianity, and Islam as a result. Now that's debated by some, but you know, in the interest of looking at multiple perspectives, some people say that it influenced other monotheistic religions. And there is still uh, some following for uh, Zoroastrians around the world today, um, particularly in modern-day Iran, as well as in probably more, uh, more followers found in India. So those are monotheistic, singular, one god. Polytheistic, multiple gods, that's what poly means, multiple, more than one. Belief in or worship of more than one god. Hinduism is a great example of a polytheistic religion. Shintoism is polytheistic, but depending on who you speak to, it could be two. It could be up to 8,000. Really kind of depends, and it depends on whether or not you're talking about gods or godlike figures. There's some disagreement as far as that um, in the, the, the academic community. I've seen different sort sources saying different things with that. Some animist beliefs are considered polytheistic. Um, other scholars say that it's actually monotheistic. There's a single god with lots of spirits and, and things like that. So a lot of nuances, a lot of disagreement as far as this is concerned. Very, very interesting. And I'm sure there'd probably be disagreements among adherents as, of followers of these different religions as well if they started to weigh in on this. So really kind of interesting. So taking a look at our different hearths, and again, uh, what is a hearth? It's one of our vocabulary terms. Uh, so what is a hearth? This is where these religions began. So there's three major hearths uh, that we could include, and obviously we could be more specific as we will talk about in just a moment. The Middle East hearth, using our macrocultural region terms, uh, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, we could include Zoroastrianism as a part of that, as well as other religions too. And if you take a look at the map there, the map is actually even more specific because whereas we just lumped it together in the Middle East, the map says, well, Christianity and, and Judaism began in Israel, Zoroastrianism began in Iran, whereas Islam began in Saudi Arabia. And all of that is certainly true. It just depends on what scale you're analyzing these topics. Uh, Northern India, the hearth of Hinduism and Buddhism, there is a connection there between those two religions, despite the fact that Hinduism is an ethnic religion, Buddhism is a universalizing religion. There is some connections there with Siddhartha Gautama and kind of his perspective on things. We'll talk about that in a later lecture. And then finally, the East Asian hearth, the origins of Confucianism, Taoism, and Shintoism, along with other religions as well. You'll notice on there, on the map, there are more religions than the ones that we just specifically went through. Not a bad idea to see some of those and see where they began.